Science fiction is full of robots. Autonomous robotic machines that either help us in the case of R2-D2 or harm us in the case of the Terminators. Ever since these first appeared in books and movies, we've been fascinated by robots, especially as kids. I grew up with model robots, always wanted my own electronic robot toy. But what would these toys be like today? On today's show, I'm joined by John, a retro computer and IoT enthusiast who has a fascination for classic robot toys from the 80s. He's finally got his hands on the toy he wanted from his youth, but instead of being content there, he's given it a brain. Learn how John has turned his toy into a fully autonomous robot with the power of a Raspberry Pi. His 1984 Omnibot is capable of talking to you, following you around the corridors and offices of your workplace. Also learn how it might be slightly less of a threat than you may think. And the best part of this is you can build this yourself at home. Let's get personal computing with John Kennedy. Hey, John, thank you very much for coming. It is great to be here. Glad to have you here in the Microsoft Reactor in Redmond with Omnibot. This, this is Omnibot. This is Omnibot. This is so cool. I've seen a few pictures. <laughs> Tell me all about Omnibot. Oh, boy, where to start? Well, <laughs> if you grew up in the 1980s, this probably looks a little familiar. This was like my, my dream toy was to own a personal robot that would um, impress all my friends and scare my parents. <laughs> and I actually find this particular one on eBay, because I was I never was lucky enough to get an army box. So I find this one on eBay in a pretty sad state. And uh, I, I bought it for a nominal sum, and I uh, ripped out its spring. <laughs> well, that sounds a bit cruel. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, <laughs> I ripped out its brain, and I put a Raspberry Pi in it instead. Ooh. Oh, my favorite computer. Yes. Big fan of Raspberry Pi. Um, so you say you grew up in the 80s. This yeah. so. Well, I mean, it, it definitely got that retro look about it. What, what year are we talking? Well, about 1984, there was a whole range of these. From just beyond your imagination comes Omnibot, the fully programmable robot with a memory. Omnibot, amaze your friends. Wow! Intense! Refreshments, Earth-type snacks. Uh, I think it even appeared in How I Met Your Mother, uh, the TV show. Wow. Um, these, these are, this is like a, a, an icon for nerds. Yeah, I, must be, I, I do remember them growing up. I was a 70s baby, so I was in the 80s. This is, this is the kind of toy yes. I wanted. Like you, I was never lucky enough to right. have one. So it's very cool to see one in the flesh. And you say it's got Raspberry Pi in it. What does it do? Do you want to make, do a quick demo? Sh sure. Show me what it does? Well, well, the original one came with a little remote control, and you could just steer it around the kitchen and frighten the cat. <laughs> and this one, the first thing I did was make a remote control for it. Yeah. But of course, you know, being a nerd, it runs a, a web server on its Raspberry Pi, which I then connect to from my laptop. Uh, and so I can now steer it around uh, my office and frighten my office mates. Nice, show me, show well, me. Let's see. <laughs> oh. So it can go wrong. Nice. And hopefully it can also stop going wrong. And it's got that kind of classic <laughs> plastic 80s toy sound to it, it doesn't does. it? It has the same, same motors, the original motors in it. So the motors here are from 1984? Yep, yep. They're still, they're still oh, working oh. fine. Please stop it. <laughs> it's alive! The robots are taking over. The robots are taking yeah. over. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> that was really cool. Um, so these, these robot things are a bit difficult, aren't they? The, the hardware is difficult. <laughs> hardware software is difficult. so much easier. Okay, so tell me about Omnibot. Tell me about it. Let's talk through it. It, it, yes. looks, it looks somewhat old. It, it might look a little old. Um, it's running, like I said, a web server. Right. Um, and then a, a, a module called Flask, which allows a web server to control electronics or, or do anything. And so it's running a little Python program that talks to a control board, which connects the motors, the original 1980 motors. So it can lurch off in, in any direction under software control. Nice. OK, so the Raspberry Pi there, mm -hmm. running a web app. And that's what you were just running just, just, just now. Control, <laughs> trying, to, yeah. trying to control web apps. Web apps, not, not always the uh, most reliable for robotics. But that literally runs Python, so to, to yeah. dri drive it around. So it's the kind of thing that literally anyone who knows a bit of Python yes. could re recreate this. So just Python write a bit is of very code. simple. 
Okay, because it's, it's it's just sending a signal to to a motor to go on and off. Okay, we, we mentioned earlier when it started getting a bit a bit crazy yes. about um, some distance sensors. So yes. is, is there more to it than just there is. just the motors? So Raspberry Pi, as you know, has got lots of pins for adding mm -hmm. electronics to it, um, and it's also got a camera attachment. So I started off by adding the Raspberry Pi camera to the front. So bring it to the back. And okay, so, so Raspberry Pi camera. So we get a live view of what it's seeing, so I can steer it around the corridors of work and sneak up and see if my manager is in their office and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> and that's just the standard Raspberry that's Pi camera module. Camera. Yep. So, yep. And then this bit here is called a LiDAR. Right. Uh, so that just gives you a distance, um, anywhere between 20 centimeters and like five meters. So should stop it crashing into walls, but no guarantees. <laughs> and um, LiDAR's kind of, we hear that technology talked about for like self-driving cars. Yes. So this has essentially got part of like self-driving car technology. It does. To stop, the, that, that yep. would be used to stop a, a car crashing into yep. a wall or you know, I people. I the cars have better software than, than mine. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Okay. Uh, there's an LCD display here, so that right. just tells me things because there's no screen connected. So whenever it starts up, it'll tell me its IP address. So you can connect to the web server. Yep. yep. And it also tells me the temperature of the Raspberry Pi because it, the Raspberry Pis get a little bit warm when you start mm -hmm. to um, stress them. And it, I'll, I'll tell you why I'm being stressing this. I mean, it stresses me, but I've been stressing <laughs> this one. Um, and then down here, there's some uh, proximity sensors. They uh, they light up when or they send a signal to the Raspberry Pi if it's about to hit a wall. It's like a last minute, uh oh, stop. Okay, so the LiDAR kind of does the long distance check. Yep. Um, and if that doesn't catch the wall, there's, a, there's like a low lip maybe. Yes. Then that will catch it. That's the theory. That's, a, yes. that's the theory. That's the theory. It doesn't do well on desks. We've determined that. Okay. I mean, just, we're a little bit further away from the edge. Do you want to try, try it again? Oh, see if you can drive it forward a bit. Let's see. Fingers crossed. Okay. And then. And we nice, start. and then it can just spin round. It can spin around, left and right. It can go backwards. Um, it can blink its lights on and off. And blink its lights. Oh, so the, the eyes, the yeah. eyes light up. It's a pleasure to be here. And it can say things it because speak. Raspberry Pi has lots of uh, speech synthesizer software. So right. the Python script can just trigger uh, speech. So it's just running some speech inside yep. on the Pi. Yep. And is that speaker the original speaker that was in there? It is the original speaker. Which is why it's got that kind of 1980s <laughs> metallic kind of tang to it. So it's literally, it's the original, original wheels, original speaker, yep. new brain inside it, mm -hmm. does all these kind of cool things. Yeah. So you say it's a Raspberry Pi, it's running Flask, which is a Python web server. How do you code the robot? It's not like you plug a keyboard mouse and code with the blinky lights in the front. How do you code, yep. how do you code it? Well, you can just tell it what to do. Well, Unfortunately not. You have to use, uh, I use Visual Studio Code, right. and it can log in remotely to the Raspberry Pi in here because it's connected to Wi-Fi. And Visual Studio Code has that great plugin where it'll, you know, just log into a remote service as if you were typing right on it here on this keyboard. That's the remote SSH extension. Exactly. So you're using that. Yep. So the code you've got up on here yep. is literally the code that's on. On the robot right now. Yeah, I can ah. change it here and, and it'll change it. Change there. So, do you want to talk me through some of the code, some of the cool features? Yeah. So, what what Flask does is allow you to have a method or a function that's called um, whenever you push a button on a web interface, say. Right. So that will call a function in my Python code. My Python code was all about the Raspberry Pi's input outputs. So, for example, here's a function that is called by the Flask program that turns off the LEDs on the robot's eyes, and it does that by sending some outputs, setting outputs on the Raspberry Pi to low. That means there's no voltage going to the LEDs. So there's no power coming from the Pi to the LEDs there. Right. So you just click the button on the on the web page. Yeah. That sends a signal to the Flask app. Yep. And the lights go off. And the lights go off. Gotcha. Right. Now, you might think, why do you have three outputs when there's only two eyes? Mm. Which makes perfect sense. But what I've done is added the LEDs which support different colors. Ah. And so so you click the buttons turn on, you get Different right. colors. Because you can send a red one, a blue one, and a green one. Right. Or combinations yeah. of those. And so that's what this code in the blink on function does. It randomly decides which I put to set high. That causes a voltage to flow through the LED. That causes it to change color. So red when it's angry, blue when it's calm, and <laughs> and green when it's like to kill you. And yeah, okay, maybe maybe less on the robot killing us, please, if that's all right, you know. Yeah, um, but I mean, it can always tell us when it's going to kill us because it also has a speech synthesizer built in. So it can tell you when it's going to kill you. 
Okay. Oh, it can warn you in advance. It can warn you when it's going to kill you. Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah, uh, we, ro robots are going to try and infiltrate us. We know that, but we already know yeah, the, the whole capture the I am not a robot. But isn't that what a robot would say? That's exactly what a robot would say. Oh. Hello, human. I am not a robot. I mean, that's totally convincing. I'm convinced it's not a robot. Yeah. Now, whenever I think about Raspberry Pis and cameras, my mind always goes to uh, like AI and what kind of things. And, yeah. you know, is there any smarts in this? Are we worried about the, the rise of the robots here? <laughs> well, this is why I built the thing in the first place. I love tinkering with machine learning. Yeah. And, and I've tried these little buggies, you know, the just tiny little buggy, mm -hmm. four wheels. And uh, it's fine, but it's kind of boring. And so when I found this, I thought, you know what? I'm really going to go for it this time. So I'm, I'm really going to build a robot that, that does robotic things. Yeah. So the Raspberry Pi is running a TensorFlow application right. with a standard model um, that trains it on objects. Uh, so I can just install TensorFlow, download this model, which has already been trained by, by people way smarter than me. And it looks at the camera input and it says, oh, that's a person, that's a chair, that's a helicopter, that's a hippopotamus. And it also tells you where those are. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just trying to imagine how do you test the fact it can detect a hippopotamus? <laughs> and a helicopter at the same time. <laughs> it's, it's a busy day. Uh, and so it gives you the coordinates, an XY coordinate of the thing it's seen. So that's you on the image. So if you've got like an image like here, it can say it's like it's there yes. in the image. Oh, nice. XY coordinate of the thing. And so if I want to follow me, I say, find a person, tell me the X coordinate. Do I need to turn left or right? And then it lurches left or it lurches right, and it sees whether it got a little bit closer or a little bit further away, and then it moves towards me. Okay, so if it's got the image here and you're this side of the image, yep. it turns until you're kind of in the middle yeah. of the image, yep. and then it just goes straight. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. So it yeah. can literally follow you around. Someone yeah. can stick a drink in it, and it'll just follow you around, and you can bring down, yeah. grab a drink, have a drink, put it back. And so when I when I combine that. Um, machine learning model with like the LIDAR and with the optical sensors, it should be able to follow me, but not bump into things yeah. or not get too close and not run me over. <laughs> and so that, it's a really interesting way of combining machine learning with the sort of physical sensors and the physical actuators of the motors. And uh, it's really fun. And <laughs> it, it's scary though, when it, when it loses control, um, I've already suffered a few injuries. The robots are on the rise, aren't yes. they? Yeah. yeah. How did the robot hurt you? Should we be afraid? It, it was a very similar situation to this. I was on a desk debugging it, and it suddenly lurched off the desk. And so I dived to catch it, but I tripped, and I smashed my face right into the furniture. So I got a bit of a black eye and a mild concussion, and then the robot fell on me. So <laughs> Kind of to add insult to injuries, like, ah, I'm going I'm to get the human, you know? Yes. Uh, sadly, I didn't record that, but oh. it's already had its revenge. Nice. No, so this is this is really cool. And as you said, it's using off-the-shelf parts yes. inside a, a robot off eBay. So this is something that just anyone could it's like 100 potentially create. Hundred dollars of parts here. Hundred like hundred dollars of parts. So it's not hugely expensive hmm. for having a robot that can literally follow you around the house with a small amount of Python code. Right, and use state-of-the-art machine learning models. I mean, there's no end to what potentially this could do. Well, apart from stairs. Yeah. <laughs> Reminiscent of the Daleks of Doctor Who, you know, you're easy to run away, with, just just go upstairs, they can't catch you. The, the, the real way this can hurt you is if you trip over it. That's about it. <laughs> That's really cool. Well, thank you very much for bringing Omnibot to, to show me. It's a fantastic robot. Thank you for joining me. Pleasure to, pleasure to be here and show it off. Thank you. As cool as this project is, what's even cooler is you can recreate this at home. Check out the link below for everything you need.